Hi, I'm Teresa. Welcome to Creative Whims. Welcome back. Thanks for being here. I want to also thank you for the comments. Uh, that was very helpful to see all of the different fabrics that people like to use. It was kind of a toss up. I mean, there was a lot of linen in there, but there was also a lot of other fabrics. So I thought that was interesting. So I appreciate all of that input. Um, today is February 15th, Friday, February 15th. And this is my number, floss tube number 12. Time's flying. It's just crazy how how fast time flies and uh, how much I'm learning and it's just it's been great so far and I just look forward to it every single week. I want to give some shout outs to a couple floss tubers that I watched this week. Uh, Stitchin Stitchin Ellis and Annie, totally adorable. I learned about them through Debbie and Kef, uh, Snug Harbor Crafts. They talked about them in one of their floss tube videos so I finally this week while I was doing some punch needle I uh, watched theirs and oh, I could just listen to them talk all day I just love it and there's their banter is so cute they're just sweet souls but they're from Liverpool and anyway so go check them out the other one that I had the pleasure of uh, watching the last couple of weeks is stitching by the lake Marlene this her last floss tube video she showed some quilts that she's made. Wow. <laughs> They're absolutely stunning. She did a wool one. And I like the more primitive colors. And it, oh my goodness. You just, you've got to go check her out. That was awesome. Uh, so this past week, what did we do this past week? Well, last weekend, you know, I've said before in my videos that there's rarely a weekend that we stay home. But with not only with market coming up but just there was he didn't have a gig or anything and we just didn't have really any plans we stayed home friday night and saturday night and it felt so good it felt so good saturday kevin had to work and whether he was home or not i was i was going to work what else did we do sunday oh my gosh sunday we well let me uh, it's kind of a funny story Okay, so my husband likes to tease me and he likes to mess with me and probably most husbands are like that. At least my friend's husband seems to be that way. Like to pick on us, you know, and get us riled up. Well, Kevin does this thing like when I'm, if I'm driving and I'm backing up, this <laughs> is so mean, but it's, it's funny after the fact, but I usually get really mad at the time. Like if I'm backing up, he'll hit something. Oop, that was kind of loud in the car and I think I'm hitting something and I jump and he starts laughing or, or, I mean, there's been times when I'm, you know, talking to him, like I'm leaving the house and he's in the driveway and he's talking to me and I go to back out and he'll go, Oh my foot, you know, stuff like that. Well, we were at the grocery store on Sunday and we, he had, Oh, he had a, no, that, that's not it. I don't know. No, you know what? He did have a gig. Gosh, you guys, I'm so confused. That's right. He had actually, he, he had a gig Saturday night. He worked Saturday and then had a gig. That's right. And I stayed home and worked. That's what it was. So I got to stay home anyway. <laughs> but so all his band equipment, what I'm getting at is all his band equipment was in the vehicle Sunday when, you know, we went to church and then we went to the grocery store. So we had to kind of maneuver the groceries on the floor in the back seat and blah 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 anyway so he's in the front seat like leaning over and trying to move groceries over to the other side of the vehicle as i'm unloading them and so when we get done i'm going to put the cart away and when i slam the door he goes my finger my finger and i just kept walking because i thought he does this crap to me all the time and and then I happened to turn around and he's like, my, he kept, like, he didn't just give up when I ignored him. He did it again. And I thought, 
for one split second in my head, oh my God, what if I really did shut his finger in the door? So I turn around, I open the door real quick and he starts laughing. And I, and I called him a bad word. <laughs> and then I put the card away and I, and I just kept giving him the evil eye and I get in the car and I said, you know what? You are gonna be like that little boy that cried wolf one too many times and one of these days something maybe i will shut your finger in the door and i'm so not going to care because i'm going to think you're joking and it's so anyway uh anyway i think maybe he felt bad about that because uh for valentine's day he was extra nice but anyway let me back up so that was sunday and then sunday afternoon i got to meet donna Pirova. She stitched the Rejoice Angel. Well, we, we met at Red Robin. We both ordered salads. The salads came and sat there for probably half an hour, 45 minutes before we even started eating them because we were talking about, you know, the angel that she had just stitched. And anyways, we, we eat and, you know, we're visiting after we're done eating and visiting and visiting. And you know, I had no idea how much time had passed. And when we finally you know, kind of wrapped up what we were <laughs> visiting and everything. She looked at her watch and we had been sitting in there for three hours, three hours. And I said, and so I asked her to watch my stuff while I went to use the bathroom. And when I went to get up, you guys, oh, my hips, you know, I used to be like just in the past, I would say year I've had my hips ache if I sit too long. I've never had issues like that before. But anyway, it comes with, you know, being over 50, I guess. And I stood up and I, I had to stand there for a second before I could start walking. And then when she got up, when she stood up, she was the same way. She's like, oh my gosh. But anyway, we had a great visit. I am going to go to her house. She lives a good hour away. And I'm going to, she invited me to her house because she has all kinds of different fabrics to stitch on and she's going to school me. Because I designed just last week a cross stitch that I believe I can stitch myself. It's it's because I'm working on some smalls and it's small. It's very small and, and it's only, I think, three or four colors. And I want to stitch it myself. And so I'm going to her house and she's going to teach me how to stitch. I was taught one other time, a long, long, long time ago when I first started cross stitch because I thought I was going to do all the models. Ha! Isn't that hilarious? My friend Jan taught me how to stitch, but that was years ago and I don't remember. Uh, but anyway, Donna also has just a, all kinds of things that she wants to show me and teach me how to back stitch and just different things like that. So I'm going to school on cross stitching, guys. Can you believe it? Ah! Not that I'm going to start stitching my own models because I don't literally have time with all the punch needle and everything else I do, but I, it, it will help me, I think, to be a better designer if I stitch and understand how to stitch. The other thing that she offered, she's just a wonderful person. She said she would come to my studio and she said, if I was a designer, this is what I would do. And, and okay, so let me back up. I, when I first started designing, designing I only used weak dye works and I've told you about my floss tree it's right there and I have the floss on there by like color at the top I have all the creams and the grays and the blacks and then I've got all the oranges and the uh, yellows and then it goes down into the reds and then I got greens and I got blues well not only through Donna but also uh, when I was at stitching time Colette schooled me on all the different floss companies and the, the three top that she said pretty much every store carries because I love weeks. They're my number one. I'm, I love them, but there are some colors sometimes that they don't have and it's nice to have options. So I'm going, I just recently added classic color works to a couple designs and then the other one is Oh Lord. <laughs> oh, um, Gentle Arts, their sampler, I think it's called the sampler line or something. Anyway, those three 
I want to carry. Well, I, how am I going to put that? This tree, this floss tree is full. So we were talking about, you know, all the different flosses and the, how I want to integrate them in. And, and I also use DMC as well. So we, she offered to come to my studio. My husband is, I have this one wall that is really the only wall that I could do this on. And it's going to have peg, pegboard on it. There's cabinets there, but I plan on taking those cabinets out because it will give me more room because that's where I normally paint. But behind me will be a wall of floss. My floss wall, I guess you could call it. And I'm going to use those little metal little hanger things and I'm going to have just the colors lined up and it's going to be so if I have reds I'm going to mix the weeks the classic color works and general arts all together and DMC so that way when I go to design because right now I have the weeks and then I have DMC in Ziploc bags where I have all the you know the blacks and the dark colors and then I've got all the reds together so I have the Ziploc bag you know it's a pain and so she's right, Donna, thank you for the idea and thank you for offering to come and help me. She said, once you get it all ready, I'll come and put your floss on there for you. And I'm like, sweet. <laughs> uh, so that is pretty much what I did uh, on the weekend. And then this week I had Ellery on uh, yesterday, on Thursday. Thursdays, hashtag Thursdays with Ellery. And it was also Valentine's Day. And I'm like, how perfect is this to spend the day with this beautiful little girl? And my husband, when he went to work Thursday morning, he left me a card. I didn't see it until after he'd already left. He, I love brandy. And he bought this bottle of brandy. I, I don't like all brandy, but this one particular bottle of brandy, it's so good. It's B&B. &B. Anyways, he had a card leaning up against that. And then when he came home from work, he brought me a bouquet of flowers. Like, really? I'm, and I said, I didn't even get you anything. I when you know, we don't, we never exchange gifts for Valentine's Day. But I really think looking back, it's because he messed with me about getting his finger stuck in the door. <laughs> He's trying to make up. I don't know. But anywho, I felt bad because I didn't do anything for him. And uh, he said, well, you're not supposed to anyway. It's, you know, the guy's supposed to get the gift. And I thought, hmm, okay, I'm going to remember that. <laughs> So that was the week. Uh, I'm going to insert pictures of Ellery because the little girl, she's growing so fast. She's jibber jabbering more. She's she's getting to where she can stand on her own and it won't be long. She's going to be walking, you guys. She's nine months. She turned nine months on February 6th. So by the time I get back from the show, she next time I see her, she's going to be 10 months old. And she's changing so much and she's so much fun. Oh God, it's, it's the best time of my life is spending with her. I just love it. What else? I can't even see. Oh yeah, I had just jotted down the weather. Good Lord, hashtag over winter. This week was just as bad as last week. We had snow, we had rain, we had a mix. My, my driveway down to my studio is complete ice. It's ridiculous. I'm, I want spring. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to the giveaway. The giveaway is, it's a punch needle and it's called Grow. And remember, I wanted something springy. So the winner is Dishes and Stitches. So thanks for entering and congratulations. If you could please email me your mailing address, I'll get that in the mail to you. In my email, you can find it in the description box below. This week, the giveaway is 133 Daisy Hill. It's a cross stitch. And the question for this week is what is your guilty pleasure? Whether it's a food or it's a TV show, what is your guilty pleasure? And I, I have a show that I found, I don't know, a week or two ago. And I have a few shows that are guilty pleasures, but I started watching It's All Relative with Leah Remini and it's her and her family. It's, um, what do you call that? What do you call those shows? Where the cameras follow you around in your real life? Good Lord. Reality TV? I guess, that, yeah, that's what it's called. Anyway, I love Leah. I love her as an actress, but 
after I fell in love with her on King of Queens, I downloaded the audiobook of her. I can't remember the name of the book. And I will look that up though and let you know in the description box below. But it was about her being in Scientology and how she got out of Scientology. And I had heard about Scientology little bits here and there, but she gives an in-depth look at how horrible that is. I It blows me away that that can even go on in our country. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. But anyways, I'm just, it was really eye-opening and her experience and, and I mean it was just it's a, if you get a chance to listen to that book or read the, her book it's it's awesome so anyway I really like her and when I saw she had a reality TV show I'm like are you kidding me and her mom is so funny her mom's laugh is just the best thing on the planet it's it's funny it's a guilty pleasure all right we're on to questions and answers this week, uh, I some of the questions weren't from YouTube. People messaged me on Facebook, but it pertained to what we do here. She asked me, what gauge do I use on my CTR needle and what size stretcher bars would be good to start with? And that was such a great question because I didn't even know and I had to look it up for her. Well, I'm just going to show you a little bit here. So I use the CTR the green handle and okay I use this is just a, like a pencil gripper it just helps me I actually need a new one because this one's stretched out and it slides on me a little bit so this right here this red piece and I think the black too yeah okay can you see whoops I separated those So this black is a gauge, see how I'm sliding it down, and then this red is also a gauge. And then from here to here is a half an inch, and that is what I like. So you could take, if you wanted longer loops, you would take those gauges off and you would get a longer loop. I don't like using a longer loop. I don't like the looks of it, number one, but also if you think about it, the longer the loop, the more floss you're using. So the more expensive your project's gonna be. And so when you get your needle, you're gonna have gauges in a little tube thingy like this. So that answers that question. And then as far as the stretcher bars, I use 11 by 14. I talked about it, I thought I mentioned it before, but anyways, it's 11 by 14, I get my stretcher bars on Amazon and I had said in a previous video that I only have one because I'm a monogamous puncher but I'm not anymore well I still am I have I don't have two projects going yet but I bought four more 11 by 14 stretcher bars so that I can so now I have I can get four projects going in at once if I want to and one of the reasons I did that is because people have been asking me to please do a punch needle of my angels and I I know that's gonna be a very intense punch and it's gonna take me a long time to do it so I need to be able to work on it here and there and get other things done I can't devote too much time just to one that's kind of what I'm getting at second question here is Kathy Evans she's not sure how to finish punch needle well I'm gonna give you guys a link where you can go and watch a clip that is is with my punch needle tutorial that you can purchase for 30 I think it's 37 dollars or 30 yeah 37 dollars it's called fun with punch needle I am going to redo that I know I've said that before I haven't had time obviously but I'm going to redo that tutorial and it's going to be way more in depth than what it is now if you did purchase it now you when I put the new one on there, you'll have access to both. So there's that. But there's a part of that video that uh, it talks about the finishing part and different things you can do with your punch needle once it's finished. And I'm going to give a link below in the description box so that you can go watch that. It was something I created for 
punch needle students. Like I taught in uh, Sauter Village and you know, I do some other teachings at some stores, LNSs, and I just wanted a place for them to go to be able to see different ways to finish. Because during the class, I show them, I bring a bunch of punch needle and I show them how to finish. But, you know, sometimes you leave and then you forget how to do it by the time you're done with your project. So, anywho, that hopefully will help you out, Kathy. Darlene Wilkinson, will it be a class or a demonstration on how to punch needle? So last week I mentioned that I will be at Stitch and Time in Saginaw, Michigan, May 4th at 11 a.m., which is a Saturday. It's going to be a full-on class. You will get, I, I'm going to go ahead and draw the, the image on the weaver's cloth for you so we don't waste time in class doing that. So you'll get a pattern, you'll get all the floss, and what you have to bring are like your scissors, your punch needle, your hoop or your frame, whatever you're gonna use to secure your fabric. If you don't have those things, either I will have them or Colette will have them at the store. So you can purchase them the day of the class or purchase them early. You can order on my website, but then you pay shipping. So anyways, uh, when you if you do sign up for the class, let Colette know what you're gonna need if you do need you know punch needles or you you're gonna need the hoop or the frame let her know so that we can kind of make sure we have enough inventory for everybody that's it for questions pretty short short and sweet finishes well I don't I, okay, this is the deal I have a lot of finishes because like we're preparing for market I plan on doing a video midweek next week after I get all of my models FFO'd. I ordered frames for the two new angels and I cannot wait to see them. Because it's so late in the game, I can't send them out to be professionally framed. So I ordered gorgeous frames and then I'm going to watch YouTube videos on how to do the lacing in order to secure them without sticky board especially on the angels basically you'll see all my finishes midweek next week I don't have any haul because I don't have time to shop right now <laughs> I was gonna show you the winter uh, Christmas figurines last week I showed you my Halloween ones and I said that I would show the Christmas in the uh, winter ones now this week so I'm gonna go ahead and show you this guy same thing happened with him is happened with that one ghost looking guy the it must be whatever color this paint is doesn't react well with uh the clay but he's all chipping too but i love him he's got a little star on his hat i think he's adorable and i think at one point he was holding yeah he was he was holding something i don't know what it was a flag or something and then we have this guy, love him. He's got a cute little bell on his hat. And then on the back, he has this cool looking star. I don't know if you can see it. And then we have, so I guess I'm doing all the snowmen first. And then we have this guy, same thing with him. He's kind of falling apart a little bit with that that paint I love he's got this little tiny snowman attached to him and this cute little grapevine wreath and he's got a bobblehead love this guy some of these I don't know if anyone ever bought any but I some of these were reproduced by blossom bucket and then Colonial Tin Works, they did some too, but this one. Now see, this one, the paint's not chipping at all, so I'm not sure why it does on some and not on others. But it's a mystery. And this guy, love him. I love his little bobblehead. I'm trying. I have to touch the screen so it will focus on him. And he's holding a cute little pumpkin guy. I love him. Love the bobbleheads. So 
this guy, I actually did him, an, made another one of him for when I had Coquit Studio Uncut. I did one of my classes, or one of the lessons, I should say, not classes. One of the lessons was this guy, but I, I didn't want to do a pumpkin. I did a little snowman bucket instead. And he's got a little bobble head, but his neck is broke. I don't know what's wrong with him. Yeah, he's he's got issues. But this one, when I showed it on, uh, when I taught the lesson, there we go. He is actually paper clay, not Sculpty. Because all my Sculpty, all my Sculpty, he looks like he's looking at me. All my Sculpty was dried out because I haven't used it in years. And then I've got these, I love these snowmen buckets. Little snowman buckets, and then I've got like some vintage ornaments, little ornaments in there, and then this little sign says "Wish." I think he's so cute. And I got one more of those. I love this. And then another vintage ornaments in there. He's kind of dusty. And then my Santas. I have more Santas than this, but. <laughs> Some of them got broke, like they're missing an arm or something, so I'm not showing those. But uh, I love this guy's face. And I made three more like this and gave them to my friends at Christmas time one year. And then this dude, he's my all time favorite Santa. Focus. I love that he's got this little snowman guy. And then I put paint on them to make it look like there's snow on them. Kind of makes them look antique -y. But yeah, these are so fun to make. But I might... Somebody somebody mentioned somewhere about I should offer a class in making these. And like I said, I did film the one. So I might do that and offer it at Gather, Dream, Create. So I did a little short video last week because I reached 7,000 likes on my business Facebook page and I felt bad because some people were like well you know not all of us are on Facebook so I apologize for that part but I was just excited about it and I wanted people that did have a Facebook page to be able to enter in on the drawing I didn't want to leave anyone out so I apologize for those of you that don't have a Facebook page, but for those of you that did, I hope you went over and liked my page and got in on the drawing. I had, I forget how many comments now, but I did the random.org and then I counted down the comments and the winner is Rita Meager. It's Rita M-A-E-G-E-R. So congratulations, you won the original painting. Actually, I have her hanging up here. You won Watcher. So send me your address and I'll get her in the mail to you. It was so hard. Ugh, so hard. Like as I'm scrolling down, you know, because random.org gives you a number. And then I count down to that number and that person wins. And I'm passing, like scrolling past people that I'm like, oh, you know, people that I know. And I thought, oh, I wish they could win it, you know. <laughs> but anyway. Hey, I'm keeping it legit. All right, we're cruising right along. Oh, I didn't do I didn't do whips. Here is my whip. I this this is for market. So uh, normally this close to market, I would not be working on something. But remember Santa's garden and how pretty that border was, and I said there was a snowman to go with it. I had the option of holding the Santa back and waiting till I got the snowman done and then releasing them later in the year, or I could just kick butt and get this guy done because I really love these and I decided to go for it and I, I think I got pretty far. So there's just a matter of doing the border, which is an intense and huge border, but uh, I'm, I'm going to get him done this weekend. My husband's working again Saturday, so... Guess what I'm doing? I'd be working whether he was home or not, to be honest with you. So that's the back. I just wanted to show you that so you can see the border that's going to be there. But here's the front, 
and I just love him. I think he's really, really cute. And the two of those hanging together in your house would be so pretty. So that was my whip. So the Chi Chinese fortune teller, and we're on to that now. Oh, I didn't write her name down. Uh, I usually give credit to who I picked. My bad. But anyway, she she picked green three five, and then I realized there's not a five, so we just I picked four. So green, green three four. I was gonna hold it the same way every time. Okay, G R E E N one two three, and then I'm picking number four. Tell a funny personal story. Why do we keep getting the same thing? I guess because it doesn't, I mean, anyway, it is the same thing. I don't even know what year this was. We had turkeys. Not really, I don't want to say pet turkeys because we, we got them when they were little little babies, little babies. And we got them at the same time we got some meat chickens. Let me back up. We had, oh gosh, I gotta, okay, I'm gonna tell two stories in one. I'm telling two stories in one because they go together. You gotta tell them together. My husband used to sell real estate and there was this house that these people got kicked out of because they, you know, weren't paying the mortgage or maybe it was a land contract, I don't remember. But anyway, he went over to look at the house and there were eggs like all over the yard. And he realized that they had chickens, but when they left, they just abandoned these chickens. So he decides we would, you know, we've got this old playhouse that the kids used to, well, they really didn't play in it much, but it was, it's like a swing set and then on one end of it, it's got this little playhouse and then it's got a slide and a little deck on it. Anyways, he said that could be a chicken coop. So anyway, we go over, this is so funny. He gets the thing ready. He, he has a cage to put them in. And one day after church, and I'm in heels this day, so I wasn't helping, but Kevin and Ryan and Ryan, I'm trying to think how old he was. He, he probably was like seventh grade maybe. And we went to this house and we had to try to get the chickens. Okay. We know nothing about chickens. We did. We bother looking up like anything about chickens. No, we didn't bother to do that. Cause you know, that's how we roll. We just like fly by the seat of our pants. So we get to this house and we're trying to find the chickens. And then they're out back just kind of grazing or whatever they were doing, eating bugs and stuff. And they try to catch them. And chickens run fast. It was the funniest thing on the planet. They're running and running. So, so then they decide, and, th and they would run under like bushes and the stuff was overgrown and you couldn't reach them. And so then they decide we need to kind of corral them and try to corner them. So I don't remember, he must have had food or something. Somehow he got them out and he got them in this area in the back of the house where they could kind of, they were kind of all grouped together. And so then they are like creeping in, Ryan and Kevin, to get these chickens. And <laughs> when they get close enough, when they went to grab them, they flew, and I, I did not know chickens could fly. See, this is how much I know about chickens. I didn't know they could fly. And neither did Ryan, because he screamed like a girl. He like, ah! I mean, it was hilarious. So we ended up leaving without chickens. And then we decided to look up, you know, how we can get these chickens. And then, well, what ended up happening is they roost at night. So Kevin went over there at night when they were roosting, and he went in and he could because they're kind of in that sleep mode or whatever. And he grabbed them and put them in the, the um, pen and brought them home. Anyway, so we had chickens for a while. Was it three or four? 
I don't know. There was Henny Penny, Black Betty. Oh, well, Betty White came later because we end up getting more chickens later. But my our son Kyle named them, and he had the best names for them. But anyway, so we ended up getting more two no four we got four of these white and black they had black like on their neck and on their tail they were gorgeous but two of them got killed by the neighbor dog and anyway so we then my husband i don't know if we were going to start a farm i don't know what he was thinking but if we're starting a farm i'd rather have a goat and a sheep just saying but he got they're called uh, meat chickens and this is disgusting we'll never do it again but you buy these chicks and they're super tiny and they grow so fast it's it just you know they were bred that way it makes me think ew it makes it's not natural it's not natural and now that i saw that ooh, it makes me not want to eat chicken but they grew super super fast and they get so fat and heavy they can't walk so like they'll get up and they walk a little way and then they lay down i mean so we had to keep them caged the whole time because they're very vulnerable to um, predators so we didn't have anything like that for them to really stay in and be safe so we, we took our old trampoline and put uh we call it chicken wire around the bottom so that way they're safe from the top, they're safe from the sides, and you could get it, you could move it around the yard. Because, anyway, that was icky. That was icky uh, when it came time to harvest them. Our son Kyle and Kevin did it, and they, and my husband's like, Ryan, you need to come and help us. And he went down and he saw what was going on, and he turned around, I don't want no part of this. <laughs> he walked back in the house, and when I saw it, I was like, I can't watch this. It's ugh, it's disgusting. So at the same time though that we bought those meat chickens, we bought two turkeys. And jokingly, they're called Thanksgiving and Christmas. But they were fun to have, to be honest with you. They were when okay, so when we got them, we don't know if we're getting two males, two females, a male and a female. We weren't sure. Well, obviously, as they grew up, we had a male and a female, which was, I think, otherwise it could have been bad. But I would think the two males would fight. But anyway, we had a male and female, and they got huge. They were huge. And the male got protective of the female. And so when you would walk up to her, he would put his wings out and fan out his tail, and he would do the strutting thing. It it was hilarious. It never did like try to attack us or, I mean, they were, they were like pets. They're weird. They're like dogs. They beg for food. If you're wearing, if you're standing there talking and you have like a shiny ring on, or they even tried to peck my husband's belt buckle, but, and it would scare the living daylights out of you. I mean, you would scream cause you're just standing there. You don't even know they're by you. And all of a sudden they peck at you and you just jump. But to me, the funniest thing about those turkeys when we would have a bonfire, not only were our dogs laying around the bonfire with us, the turkeys would come up to the bonfire and lay down and watch the bonfire. Is that insane? That is freaking hilarious, you guys. So if you ever get the to experience that, you should. It was very cool. Uh, my husband did not harvest those. He took them somewhere to be harvested, but... It, I don't like that whole thing. I can't, I can't get attached to an animal and and then, and then eat it. Uh, the meat chickens that was different because they weren't roaming around the, the yard and stuff. Uh, and then we had we had several chickens that just laid eggs, and I really liked having the fresh eggs and all that. But the ones that he rescued from that house, we didn't know how old they were, and you know. One by one, they were kind of dying off. That's why we got the the other ones, the white ones with the black on them. And probably, oh, I want to say a year and a half, maybe two years ago, we were down to just the black one, and then only one of the white ones was left because we have coyotes. We One of the coyotes 
killed one of our chickens right outside my kitchen window. I didn't see it, but that morning, or one morning, I just saw white feathers everywhere, everywhere in the right outside my kitchen window. And, and it, we have coyotes around here, so that just, ugh. So we were down to Black Betty and Betty White. That's what we called them. Well, then uh, Black Betty died, and so we have a neighbor that has sheep and chickens and horses and all kinds of animals, and so we gave him, gave him, gave it to our neighbor because he had chickens. Anyway, that's my story. That is my funny personal story of my crazy family. <laughs> And now we're down to just having one dog. I've had more than one dog in my life for the longest time, and I'm trying to get my husband to get another boxer. He said I could get another boxer when we were in Florida. Jerry heard, and my mom heard him say, I don't know if my mom actually was there at the table when he said it. I know Jerry heard it, because I even said, Jerry, you heard that, right? Because I want another boxer really, really bad. Is this the best time to get a dog? No, because I'm so busy. But I have... I have a line, I have a, I have a friend, actually it's my son's friend's mom, and her and I have met recently, and I really like her, <laughs> we talk, or we message a lot, anyway, she has, she has two boxers, and she has a breeder that lives in the area, and the, there's a litter to be delivered, or anyway, the, the litter is due in March, and they'll be ready for new homes in May. So I have from now till May to work on my husband. <laughs> I, I keep messing with him and saying, you know, all the, the things you do, my finger, my finger, it's caught in the door. You know, all these things. I think you owe me a little boxer puppy. But stay tuned, we'll see how that goes. It would be really difficult for me at first because you know, puppies are high, high maintenance. You know, and we'll just have to see. I'm so busy right now. How can I add a puppy in my life? I don't know. Plus, our daughter is having another baby in July. So my Thursdays with Ellery is going to be Thursdays with Ellery and, I don't know, it's supposed to be a boy, so we'll see. So I don't know, adding a puppy and all that is probably insane, but you know what? I kind of like that. Kind of weird, kind of do things my own way, whether it's what I should do or not. But anyway, that's all I have this week. My art, I have no art. I've been working with a couple licensees, Blossom Bucket. I've been drawing up some farm animal figurines for her, and I'm working on things for park designs. That's all behind the scenes stuff, though, that I can't talk about and show. I mean, I can't talk about it, but I can't show you any art because it's top secret. But anyway, as far as painting, again, one another week without lifting a paintbrush, guys. Getting a little antsy. So anyways, have a great week. Please don't forget to answer the question, what is your guilty pleasure, whether it is a TV show or maybe it's a food. And uh, also make sure you do the Chinese fortune teller, pick a color, yellow, green, red, blue, and then a number one through four and another number one through four. So don't forget to do that. Also, um, just thank you. I was gonna say also, I was gonna start like, spouting off my oh my facebook page and join me on instagram and do that blah, blah. i'm not gonna do that it's all in the description box below so i'm not gonna bother shouting it out but thanks so much for being here and i will see you next like wednesday i think will probably be when i get that video uploaded showing all my ffos for nashville Yay, so excited bye now